Okay, the minutes have been sent out to all the commissioners and I'm hoping that you've looked through them and does anyone have any comments, questions, changes? If not, can I have an approval of the minutes? Are you good, Cheryl? I wasn't here, so I have to abstain, or I should abstain. Yep. Maybe Ray was here. It's Ray here. Looks like Ray was here. Maybe he can second it. <coughs> Motion to approve. I was going to say. So, Ray, we have a motion to approve. Uh, Cheryl, because she wasn't here, has to abstain. So if you'd be willing to provide a motion, a second to that motion, we can go ahead and vote. Ray Mode. said yes. He did. he did. Okay. Well, we have a second. We'll do a roll call vote for approval. David Blunt. Approved. Jerry Clifford. Approved. Ray Rohana. Approved. There we go. And Melissa is out. But that is a unanimous Cheryl. approval. Cheryl's abstaining. So, yeah, we're good that we have majority approval. And now for the claims and purchase orders. Those have been sent out as well. And if there's no questions, comments, or concerns, may I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. A motion is second. We'll do a roll call vote for approval. David Blunt. Approved. Cheryl Sullivan. Approved. Jerry Clifford. Approved. Ray Rohana. Approved. Thank you. All right. Now, Dan, I will turn the meeting over to you for the old business and the new business, and we'll get we'll get going. Okay. So, item one: uh, City of Lawrence CSX stormwater ditch restoration. Of course, this applies to the Trades District as our first uh, action item. We are still awaiting on a pr uh, proposal from Indiana Reclamation. They were, as of two weeks ago, they were working through the CSX railroad mandates to determine what that cost impact was gonna be within their proposal. I would expect that we will have that proposal at our January meeting. I'm asking Joe to confirm that um, with them, and give them a call tomorrow and just be sure that they're expecting to turn that in for our January meeting. Civil Engineering RFP, uh, it is out on the street. It's uh, posted to our website. We've also sent it to probably six or seven engineering firms. It's getting an awful lot of attention. Um, about every major engineering firm and within 60 miles of Indianapolis has been in to see us or asking about it. Might point out a few things. One is that we've asked them to strongly consider teaming. Uh, we think we'll get a better product if we get specialist engineering firms all teaming together for different segments. It'll also bring more people into the community. We've also, as of today, put an addendum on the website with a significant minority requirement uh, for that to try to be sh encourage minority participation as part of that proposal. So I think we'll be seeing that uh, oh, and we did uh, extend the receipt of that out till the end of the submission date till the end of February, somewhere, it's somewhere around the 20th of February, because the holidays terribly detract from the quality of what you get if you try to force that down their throats. We want, I don't think we're in a hurry. We want to be sure that that's a really high quality product. I've already dis started discussions uh, with various parties I think I've shared with you that I expect that to be a substantial sum of money that we don't want to bear solely ourselves. It's my hope that when we get to that point that uh, we can take the leadership role with a 40 or 50 percent stake and then utilities and the council each participating maybe to 25 percent or 30 percent of that total to show a total city support f for the project. So we'll visit that when we get those back and uh, start to look through that. It's my intent, uh, we haven't really talked about it with Sri and Scott, but it's my intent to have, uh, as part of the scoring group, a representative of, of course of the RDC, but also utilities, maybe the council, engineering, uh, to be sure that we get a fair look from all the different stakeholders and, and a transparency as part of the process. So as we get closer, we'll, we'll look at that more. Any questions on that at this point in time? 
Hearing none, I'm going to ask Tyler to give you an RDC update. Uh, Cheryl, in your absence last month, Tyler is proposing, we have a, a bond that's close to retiring that was taken out years ago just for, to give the RDC some working cash. He proposed that we consider renewing that bond. So with that, I'll have uh, Tyler and Bruce present that discussion and give you a financial update of where we are today. So uh, I'll direct your attention to uh, the first document here. It's labeled RDC bond refinancing projection scenario one. Uh, so kind of a refresher, we had talked about um, what, what things would look like if you chose to refinance your outstanding debt. Uh, currently January 1 you'll start that uh, outstanding balance would be at 810,000 so you could refi that um, it was originally issued as a two million dollar loan so we have two scenarios here one looking at two million and one looking as you refunded it uh, with two and a half million so you could have more uh, bond proceeds and then in the current rate environment I took this out 20 years uh, I think the original if I can recall I think it was a 10 year or 15 year deal so by going out a little bit further uh, you lower the payment so by even going after two and a half million, it really doesn't impact you much um, in terms of uh, your cash balance at the end of the year, what you would already have with your existing debt. So we'll go through that here. Uh, so taking a look here at the RDC bond refinancing projection scenario one, what I did was the bond issuance of two million. <clears throat> I showed you um, uh, paying off your outstanding debt and then I did just a uh, general 100,000 in estimated cost of issuance. And so that's kind of based off of some uh, recent transactions, and I think that's uh, probably fairly close. Uh, so what you'll see here is if you did this uh, with just the two million, you will be left with, we'll call it a million in uh, net proceeds to do um, what you will with it. And you can identify projects through that process as well. So I'm sure if, if we went this route, you would already have those projects lined out as we went through. That ties into the next page, which is the 406 redevelopment capital fund scenario one. So these are the same projections we had at the last meeting, but I, I changed it to reflect the new projected debt payment based off of the, the schedule I'd made. Uh, so really where you'll see the differences in the 2022 projected. So 2021's, it, the projection there has the current debt service payment of 168,000. So if you went for 2 million and you extended it out to 20 years, uh, you're gonna have a lower debt payment. Uh, so in reality, I mean, this helps your, your bottom line. Uh, and I, so I think that's that's a good option as well. Uh, I, I'll kind of cut to the chase. I think the two and a half million dollar option in scenario two is probably a better bang for your buck if you're gonna uh, go this route. Uh, but generally speaking, I want to make sure you guys can see what that would look like. Um, from a cash projection perspective, I, I did change the revenue projection slightly from last time. I think it's maybe, might be a little too conservative on the revenue projections, but I, I, I think the end of the, takeaway here is you still end even 2024 with a very solid uh, cash balance. Um, and obviously that's helped by reducing your debt payment. So if we move into scenario two, uh, same cover page, uh, it's the exact same thing, bond issuance of two and a half million uh, with your outstanding debt out of that and then same cost of issuance estimates. Um, so you'll end with um, about a, almost 1.6 million in net bond proceeds. So generally speaking, I think you know, you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck in this scenario and you'll have a lot more to do. Um, now, if we go further down this process, what I would just recommend is considering what projects you have on your plate and what you wanna get done. So that could help dictate which, which route you go. And generally speaking, if you, if you don't need, or don't feel you need to go for 1.6, you know, scenario one's fine as well, but um, if you've got projects you can identify, and I'm sure uh, Dan can do that, we'll, uh, I do recommend that one. Uh, so moving on to the, the final page here, uh, again, in, in the category under 2022, you see the new debt service payment is still slightly below your existing debt service payment. And I mean, that makes sense, um, you know, an extra 500,000 over 20 years at current rates, it's not gonna cost you all that much. And you can kind of see that reflected here. Uh, you still end with, in 2024, um, I think it was roughly, if you flip back, <coughs> about $100,000 less in cash than uh, you did in scenario one, but you're still at a pretty healthy cash reserve, and that doesn't even anticipate um, what you could do to boost your revenue with the with the bond money. I mean, investments in the area are gonna help your revenue projections, so um, this is still with 
fairly conservative revenue projections. Uh, so I think kind of the key takeaway here is I wanted to give you two scenarios and, and then let, leave it up to you all to decide how you want to play this out. But um, either route is a great option in my opinion. Um, if you've got projects on your mind that you want to go after, to me, scenario two uh, just shows that you have a little bit more leeway where you can get a, a lot more done. So that's kind of the key takeaway. Uh, I didn't change any projections from last time uh, all too much, so uh, there's not much more on that. But if you guys have any questions for me I, or really thoughts moving forward, uh, I'm open to any suggestions or feedback. Explain again to me the, the trade-off between your recommendation of scenario two where we would have $100,000 less in the ending cash position. So essentially by 2024 you would have 100000 less in cash, um, but you would have had about 600000 more in bond proceeds. So up front. Up front. Got yeah. it. Okay. That was the and, and one thing to keep in mind is that that 787 you're ending with, uh, is really where you would probably be ending in 2024, even if you kept the current outstanding debt um, as of right now. So in reality, you could, the third option is do nothing end 2024 with probably the exact same cash balance, but be out $1.6 million. <clears throat> Thank you. And none of these take into effect that beginning and probably, see this is 2021, Tax will probably become 2023, I'm guessing, before we really see it. But the free G proceeds, race track probably coming online in 23 or 4. Uh, so those will start to see some pretty significant investment increases in that TIF uh, in, in that time frame. And they're not, they're not reflected here. Uh, aside from the cost of issuance, what, what's a rate uh, for the bonds? Uh, the interest rate would be right around 2%. I did this with 2%. Um, 2%? And, yeah, give or take a couple. Okay. What uh, the on-spent, <clears throat> excuse me, the on-spent proceeds from the bonds, okay, what, did, what was your projection of what we would earn on the money that's sitting there that's on-spent? Or uh, if we were to keep it in the bank earning interest? Is that what you mean? Well, interest or something. I didn't know how you were investing the non the the the, um, the held if you will proceeds from them because we're not going to i mean obviously we're not going to spend all the money initially and um mm -hmm. i don't have a feel for what what do we earn on what's sitting there currently you don't earn, earn a lot of anything so with the yeah. current rate environment uh, what we did initially was we opened up uh, a money market account which is a standard bank account that you could open up that was like earning two percent uh, that was back in what uh, 2018, and then I've just watched that um, get slashed. So if you're not going to make anything on cash sitting in the bank right now. Accounts I looked at this week were paying between 0.02 and 0.08. Yeah. 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 Is there a way if you're if you're looking at where we're going on a prospective basis? Is there a way to earn more money than than leaving it sit in the bank safely? Yeah, we're, we're, you know, I, I might just, I might just say, Jerry, the, we, we have public investment laws in Indiana that yes, restrict <laughs> what you can invest in, and it has to be very safe, yep. you know, uh, high grade stuff, which right now doesn't earn very much. So that's, that's part of the problem. Okay. Yeah. So that's what your rates are tied to, right? So if you, if you're in a bank account earning 0.02 to 0.08, I mean, you're, you're seeing, you had a deal you just said was a, a a bond anticipation note issued at less than a percent. 0.7%, yeah. Okay. The rates are just incredibly low, so your cash sitting in the bank account just is not going to earn much. Yeah. Now, a significant uh, consideration here, Bruce, uh, would you confirm or deny that the council will need to improve this action? Yes, council would need to approve any yeah. bond. And right now in the current environment, we don't know, and I don't mean this negatively, we don't know what the council's position would be with that if we didn't have a project or something to really substantiate the need. So it's my recommendation to this body that we wait till the engineering RFPs are returned in February and see what our cash needs are going to be relative to that. And uh, I think that will have a significant impact on the validity of the decision to renew sure. this bond. That makes sense. And, and we'll never be able to bond for less than what you can today, I don't think. All right. World to see. Time tomorrow. It's, it's, well, I mean, based, said that five years ago. Mean, 
That, that was not a political statement. <laughs> oh, we, all, we all saw the council deny the stormwater bonds the other day, which were desperately needed by this city. Okay. And uh, so to I see, I see what you're saying. So, so to go ask for just a bond increase for the RDC to have cash value sure. and expect the council to approve yeah. that, I, I think that would be a significant ask. And I'm not being negative towards the council when I say that. It's just no. the it's, current posture. So. It's a fact. And for the bonds to be issued on a, on a tax exempt basis, which you would want to get the lowest yes. interest rate, you have to have real live projects that you expect to spend money on over the next two or three years. Which we do. You, yes. you can't just you can't just borrow money and, and bank it under the federal tax laws. Understand? So, wouldn't that be nice? I, I, I wasn't suggesting that we're doing that, but right. I mean we definitely have the projects. They're just not. Yes, today. I'm sure you do. So, so the good just the, identifying them and prioritizing them. Right. Yeah. Does everybody look at me when you say that, Bruce? So <laughs> so anyway, uh, I think the great news, and we appreciate Tyler taking leadership in this every month. Uh, the great news is we've got a good solid financial report. We have a way to keep some cash in front of this group as we continue to do some projects. And I do believe there'll be some uh, help and some willingness in part of the other uh, core bodies that we would want to partner with us in this. So uh, if nobody has any further question, we'll move to new business. All right. Thank you, Ty. Are you good? Tyler, I have one comment. Um, <clears throat> I know rates are the big talk these days. If we wait until February, March, are we risking much of, because what you just said were pretty good rates. And I have friends in that business and they're like, tomorrow that could change. Could change, but I don't think you're gonna see more than a half point or maybe even a point at the most of six months. So I, given the opportunity cost for where we are and the, and the reality of where we are, I think that's reasonable. Yeah. Pretty safe, okay. I think the I think right now, on, on, from the Fed side, if you raise rates too rapidly, too quickly, it'd be a problem for them. So I think we'll see them low, and if anything, it would be a very steady, low increase. We probably have time to act. You know how much time is tough to tell, but yeah. you'll know as they start to raise them. You'll know I need to move before they get to a certain point. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Rahan, are you good? Yes. Thank you. Next item as we move to new business, uh, resolution number 4 2021, uh, authorizing the sale of property located at 8013 East 46th Street. I believe you all are aware that uh, we have a company that is interested in purchasing that property. It's uh, Metronet uh, to use as their headquarters for uh, the deployment of fiber throughout the city. Uh, that is, uh, for anybody that may not be aware of that parcel, that's a very narrow parcel that sits was the old motorcycle shop sits across from the gold brick tavern oh. sandwiched in between it and that old other building that's sitting there mm -hmm. but it's also one that you recently paid through your environmental grant to be sure the environmentals were solid in it and they were fine has some setback concerns uh, so it's really a, a lot that's pretty hard to develop we think this is a perfect use for that the appraisal pretty much supported what I just told you. It came back at either ten or twelve thousand uh, dollars. I've asked uh, Mr. Donaldson to prepare this resolution reflecting the appraised value plus what we spent in appraisals as the minimum offering price. Uh, Mr. Donaldson, would you like to explain your resolution or anything else relative to this matter? It's a fairly uh, standard kind of resolution you've seen before when we've offered property. Um, as uh, Dan said, you're required to get the two appraisals, which you've done. Uh, this has an offering sheet attached to it um, that gives the bidders sort of the uh, conditions and information for it. So if you adopt this resolution, we would proceed to publish a notice and probably come back at your January 13 meeting for uh, uh, bids on the property. So we're looking for an approval of the resolution in a second, please. I'll make a motion to approve. Ray's made the motion to approve. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second on resolution 4 2021. We'll do a roll call vote for approval. David Blunt. Approved. Cheryl Sullivan. Approved. Barry Clifford. Approved. Ray Rohana. Approved. Thank you. 
All right, the next item appears a little self-serving to me. Uh, I don't mean it that way. I am going to make the statement to this body that I love working with you and I love working with the city of Lawrence. Smaller. But should you choose not to exercise this, it's totally your obligation and I'll still love you. But Cheryl wasn't here, Commissioner Sullivan wasn't here, but the mayor appeared in front of the council <clears throat> or the commission last month and uh, with tighter support uh, explained that because of the new council's budget cuts, there's no longer money in the city's budget to retain my services to represent the economic development proportion called in for the city or the redevelopment commission. And therefore he asked that the redevelopment commission would consider taking my contract for 2022. I presented that contract to you in its form right here. It's exactly as it's been presented to the city. I sent it to, uh, in the past, I sent it to Mr. Donaldson for review. Basically the city uh, in its original retention of my services guaranteed a minimum of 16 hours, which was kind of a joke. Uh, the, the mayor took that and ran with that. Uh, I will tell you that the hourly rate is $210 an hour in 2022 and uh, the administrative support, there's hardly any administrative support ever required, $80 an hour. Uh, I cap my expenses back and forth to Terre Haute. They're actually more than that almost every trip and it just makes it easier math for me. I cap my trip when I do have to come over here at $375 a round trip and there are occasions when I do need to be here two or three days in a row and it's actually cheaper for the RDC to have me stay in a hotel than it is to drive back and forth. Uh, I think it would be practical for you to know, uh, I'm often accused of talking too much, but I believe the more people understand, the more understanding they are. And uh, Tyler can verify this. My typical invoice to the city on a monthly basis is plus or minus, what would you say $9,000 probably? Uh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, this month it was nine, some months it's, in a heavy month, it's 11, like the trades district when we're really going through it. And in a soft month, it's seven, but it's typically around $9,000 a month. Uh, as you can see, the scope of work provided, I would be uh, the liaison between the RDC and the city. I work on the RDC business and cover the RDCs, continue to cover the RDCs, real estate and uh, economic development strategy. Uh, uh, and Joe would continue to serve in his role as my support person under the budget with the city. So with that, uh, I guess the ask is, if you all want me to stay in this position, uh, we're asking you to approve my contract for 2022. This will become effective January 1 of 2022. Uh, Mr. President, I recommend that we enter into the independent contractor agreement with uh, Mr. Zerner. I do have a quick question. So. This would only be for 2022, and then we would need to redo it for 23? The way it's set uh, right now, it automatically renews if notice isn't given within 60 days prior to, to the end of the year. Okay. And it also has a provision where you can terminate this contract at any time with 30 days notice from either party. So if you get to February and some reason you want to terminate it, you can do that with no penalties. Try to make it as fair as we can. My questions. <laughs> what questions? Sure. No. Sure. Um, it says the rates are effective 2021. Uh, Is that, that a typo? Oh, yeah. It, it, yeah, it should be 2022, Cheryl. Okay. And then, second, I think given the term of the agreement, where it says it automatically renews for one year period unless terminated pursuant to, and it's actually 30 days, not 60 days. Okay. We're already into the automatic renewal. So I just asked staff to schedule this review next November rather than December because we're already caught in an automatic renewal. Although I think it's kind of mute because uh, I did build in the 30 day termination clause at any point in time, so. Correct. Correct, but but since it says term of agreement will automatically renew for a subsequent you, you one year period, I I I'd make a recommendation that we not that we have this discussion at the November time. meeting. Yep. And then and then the only other one, given um, <clears throat> the mayor's statement that he can no longer cover the expenses, I wonder under the scope of work 
Would it make sense under, I guess, the <coughs> second bullet um, to add the third bullet under there? In other words, where it says serve as an extension of the mayor in, delete that and then start with the fourth bullet of the one above. Respond to inquiries from parties interested in, um, just because that would be the extension of the RDC rather than, it reads now as if, almost as if it's still an extension of the mayor. We, we can take the serve and extension of the mayor out. Yes. I think that's appropriate. And then, then the bullet would start with respond to inquiries from parties, da 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 da. da. And with that, I'm willing to second the, the motion. So you want to second it after we make those changes? Yes. Okay. Yeah, can we make that as a, sec a second subject to those changes being made? Yeah. And then it's, we'll redo it for David's signature. That works. That worked for. Particularly just changing the date. Yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. So we have a motion and a second for the approval of the independent contractor service agreement for Dan Zerner, barring some uh, amendments to the agreement. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote for approval. David Blunt. Approved. Cheryl Sullivan. Approved. Jerry Clifford. Approved. Ray Rohana. Approved. Thank you. Welcome back, Dan. Yeah, welcome back. Thank you. I, I'm humbled and appreciate the working relationship we have and your willingness to continue that. Thank you very much. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, the next item, uh, thanks to Commissioner Rohana uh, for helping us get this work, worked out. We have in front of you a, a realtor listing agreement uh, that I'll have uh, Joe speak to uh, for the 4711 German Church Road property. Thank you. Um, this is a listing contract with a realtor by the name of Tim Kaiser. Uh, we met last week and, and discussed the property and he feels confident that we can meet the goals that we set out to when we first listed this property for sale. Um, you'll see in the list price, he has an initial list price offering of $100,000, um, which is not very far off the $90,000 list price that we initially had in our offering sheet. Um, there's been some discussion with uh, Bruce, which I, I think probably Bruce, you could discuss a little better than I could about the uh, concern about the the sale. Would you speak to that, please? Yeah, yeah. I just had a, a couple of comments. Uh, one, I think they just needed to correct. Uh, there was a, they checked yeah. the box that the seller is a foreign corporation. That yeah. needs to be an is not instead yeah. of an is. Um, in in section A two, uh, the way I read that, uh, a, a commission would be triggered if the broker brought a buyer who was willing to pay the asking price without any discretion on, on the behalf of the commission to accept or reject. And I, I think you should still retain the right to reject an offer if you don't like who the buyer is. So I, I'd probably recommend trying to get that one little clause out of there. I think the commission should just be due <laughs> if, if you actually make the sale and close on it rather than Bringing a bringing an offer that might meet the minimum offering price, but it's not a, a buyer that you want. So the motion I'm seeking is to accept this listing contract, subject to the changes required by our council, Mr. Donaldson. And once that's occurred, uh, allow Mr. Blount to sign it. Execute. Yeah. Uh, Ray, please, uh, one more time. I might want to phrase that so that it does not lead to objective discrimination. Yeah, so I think Ray's point is, Bruce, we want to be sure you, you phrase the latter, that we don't reject it in a manner that reflects some kind of discrimination. Sure. I mean, yeah, I, 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 that wasn't at all, obviously, my... Yeah. My intention, I, uh, you just may want certain uses for the property. You are the redevelopment commission. I think you have some ability to decide how you want that property uh, used. So if, if, they, if they wanted to come in there and, and put a, uh, a tattoo parlor or <laughs> maybe something that you didn't want, yeah. uh, I'd like you to be able to have the opportunity not to accept an offer, even if it's for the asking price. 
And of course, that can somewhat be controlled by zoning, but um, I agree with you. Do we have a motion to approve from Ray or? I could not yet. I don't think so, no. 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 I, would, I would make a motion to approve it. Subject to the incorporation of Mr. Donaldson's suggestions. Correct. Yep. A second. All right. Um, we, no, go ahead. Yeah, we have a motion and a second for the approval of the uh, listing contract with uh, Tim Kaiser uh, for 4711 German Church Road uh, with the inclusion of the comments uh, made by Bruce and his uh, changes. So we'll do a roll call vote for approval. David Blunt. Approved. Cheryl Sullivan. Approved. Jerry Clifford. Approved. Ray Rohana. Thank you. The next item on the agenda, uh, Joe has <coughs> produced the RDC calendar. Have you all received that? Was it part of your packet? Yeah. Yes. And I assume nobody has any objections to any of those at this point in time. Is there any other business to come before the commission? The only other business I have is, Jerry, be safe traveling home in eight inches of snow tomorrow to Minnesota. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And uh, I want to say to the council that I, the commission, I probably won't be back in town after today now until the first year, but it has and continues to be a pleasure to serve this group, and we wish you the very best of holidays. And to you, Dan. And I do have one. So I saw something that the CDC is dissolving. The Community no. Development Cor Corporation? Yeah. I saw something. Are you talking about Chris's group? Yeah, Chris Barnett. They, he, Chris has promoted them, promoted that it needs to be dissolved because they're out of funding and don't have any projects and doesn't look like any projects coming their way. Okay. So when we had that discussion with him maybe 90 days ago, but I had not heard any more about it, but that was part of the discussion. Okay. Yeah, someone sent me a screenshot. I think it was from the website that said they've decided to off so and I that would affect us not a lot but it'll affect us so I was just wondering if anybody knew anything more I probably should share with you all um, we have some really significant developments going on in the fort right now uh, Fort Harrison or uh, Harrison Ford I've mentioned to you is a major expansion the FHRA has uh, voted to uh, approve developer back bonds uh, we will be putting our own Economic Development Commission back in place, uh, our Economic Development Corporation back in place as the to, to help make that bond happen. It hadn't been since 2019, Bruce, hadn't it, since they've been in play? Since the uh, cityscape the deal, city right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but their project is really cool in three ways. One is they're going to have a big, beautiful new warehouse. If you can imagine a warehouse being beautiful, it, it will look nicer than what they have currently in their office main building. Two, it does make the CS track, X track viable for freight in Lawrence uh, to serve them. Primarily, it's all non-toxic stuff. It's glycerins and anything you basically consume as food would be in those trader cars. Third, and probably the biggest thing for this group to be excited about, they're going to uh, convert the old Ucky storm, uh, stormwater retention pond that sits to the west or east of their facility right by the overpass to a brand new creek and uh, dry basin that will be beautifully landscaped. All the scrub bash will be removed and all the brand new trees and things planted and make that look beautiful, almost in a park environment uh, that will really help the city. So uh, some really cool things going on in the fort and I expect that bond issue to be brought to the council. We went to the council with an education session this week. I expect January or February at the latest that bond uh, request will go to the council for approval. They have to approve it even though the FHAR is, FHRA is listing it as the guarantor. And then uh, uh, we also have some uh, major uh, utility upgrades we're anticipating uh, working through in 2022. Clark Dietz came back with their study to repair the major sanitary issues that are holding up all our developments happening now on the rest of the fort. And uh, we expect to get that underway in 2022 as well. So a lot of great things happening for the fort. Another thing for those of you in the fort, just as a matter of information, this is tribute to Joe. We've been working with drone deck. We have DNR approval now for the uh, 
placement of the drone docking stations within the fort for the beta test. As long as they're only there for a couple of weeks for the beta testing, the DNR has approved their placement. And uh, right now, Schneider Engineering and who was the other one? Boomerang. Uh, Boomerang have asked to be the first participants in that beta testing. So we expect that to start occurring. May actually see some drones fly before the end of the first quarter, maybe. Uh, so some really cool stuff happening. That's the end of my report. Will that placement of those docking stations be made public? <coughs> yes. Their yes. Beta testing. Yes. So that's that's the end of my report, Mr. President. Does anyone else have anything come before the commission? And if not, may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second for adjournment. We'll do a roll call vote for approval. David Blunt. Approved. Cheryl Sullivan. Approved. Jerry Clifford. Approved. Ray Rohana. Approved. Thank you. Adjourned. All right, everybody have a great, safe, happy holiday. And you as well. Um, happy holidays. I'll see you guys in a month.